Ah, good afternoon. Welcome to a very challenging talk today. I just started a video and um, I decided to redo it to try to be more clear what I'm going to say on parasitic entities, which is a, a topic that particularly people in the spiritual community really don't like to talk about. They like to only stay positive, talk about power animals and angels and spirit guides, but don't want to then talk about the other side of it, which are parasitic entities, demonic beings, and things that are here to steal your energy. And so it's a very important topic to deal with. It's a very important topic to delve into because I would assume anywhere from 90 to 95 percent of the population, maybe even higher, has some sort of parasitic entity on some level, disrupting, at least disrupting their energy, if not disrupting their entire life. And once these things are cleaned out, your life will change. Your, your health will change. Everything will change if you can clear one of these out of your, out of your energy structure. So I'm going to talk a bit today of, of, as least as I've come to understand them, what they are, some different types of entities, because some are very strong, some are a little weak, how they affect you, and uh, how we have to deal with, you might say, removing them. I first got focus on this from ancient Egypt and my study there of ancient Egyptian healing, uh, which was very similar to, to the way native, a lot of native Indian medicine men that I was with worked. And that was a three-step process. And when the, when the hieroglyphs were first uh, deciphered, modern medicine saw that the third step of Egyptian healing was very similar to Western medicine. And so they accepted this great knowledge of Egyptian medical um, understanding. But they rejected the other two types of Egyptian medicine as being stupid and archaic and lost in the Dark Ages. But it's modern medicine that's in the Dark Ages by not actually understanding the various levels of the human being. And in ancient Egypt, the three levels of healing are one, to first take your patient and find if they have a parasitic entity or demonic being and remove it. Because if that is not removed, if you don't first remove that uh, energy energy destroying being then it doesn't matter what healing you're going to do afterwards the entity is going to take a lot of the energy so it doesn't matter whether you're taking herbs or acupuncture or getting direct healing or, or having some kind of powerful healing uh, in any form the entity gets most of it hence the person almost never gets gets well the second stage after the Egyptians would do that would be to work with sound and they would use sound frequencies to uh, harmonize the energy structure one of the reasons the parasite, parasitic entity got in in the first place is that the, uh, the sound vibration, the, the vibrational state of the person has dropped, allowing a lower vibrational being to, to, you might say, break its way in. And so now you want to bring the vibration through sound back up so that you now are, ha have a protective shell again. And then the third and final stage would be the things we might think of as all the different forms of normal healing uh, that we would come into today on, on all levels. Uh, whether they be, yeah, you know, I guess say herbs, acupuncture, uh, homeopathy, um, Western medicine, uh, surgeries, uh, teeth pulling, um, cold packs on the knee, uh, anything, anything that could be classified as helping or healing any type of injury or wound, that's not going to work as long as there is a parasitic being stealing the energy. So you have to remember that. When you ask, what is a parasitic being? Well, a parasitic being is uh, a being that you can't see that is eating your energy. Just as an intestinal worm or an intestinal parasite that we pick up is living, is living off our energy, usually our food, and for example, in the stomach. And it does so without us even really knowing that it's happening. We don't know we have one other than by certain symptoms, either lack of energy, uh, weight loss, uh, pain in the stomach, uh, various problems that, that are occurring, we can only potentially guess that we have one. And, and, and back in hundreds of years ago, regular intestinal parasitic cleanses were an important part of the year using things like wormwood and black walnut hulls and all sorts of um, vermicides and pesticide, pest, pesticide. <laughs> vermicides and, uh, and parasite cleansing agents to heal the body. But the energy field has an even more important part in that because if a, if a parasite, if a parasitic en uh, entity is in your, is your energy field, 
that's going to cause you great problems, not just physically, but mentally, and in fact, can ruin your entire life. So uh, you have to recall that, well, someone will say, well, I don't see them. Yeah, well, there's lots of things we don't see in our modern world. And uh, you have to really, you have to really think back into, uh, it's very nice, the two people who actually are in charge of this uh, forest are walking by, or the, I, the forest actually near my house. And um, it's, uh, these, these two people here are, are the ones who keep it calm and safe. So it's actually nice to have them here. Um, they are, they're actually very nice people. Um, so anyway, he's going to walk behind me here. Uh, yeah, very nice, very nice people. And they, um, they keep this place calm and, um, and, and it's in a very good state, given that it's in the middle, sort of in the middle of a town in the middle of a lot of people. So it's very important, I think, to, to recognize that you can't see reality in its, in its entirety. This particular space that we are encountering, you, okay, you see me, you see the forest behind me, you saw the, the person walk behind me as he was there. But um, what we see with our eyes is maybe only two or three percent of the light spectrum. We're seeing a very small band of light. Carlos Castaneda, I think he described it as, uh, how did he describe it as? as uh, emanations of well, how do you it? emanations of the eagle i think is how we describe it these massive amounts of filaments of light that very small amounts our perception picks up and generates our world but that doesn't mean all the other filaments don't exist you're picking up just a small amount and even when you add in our senses even add in the intuition maybe we're picking up only 10 percent of what's actually here that means 90 percent is constantly not even picked up by our senses or picked up by our senses in a very minute way, and we're certainly not generating the world. So an organic being, an inorganic being, or parasitic entity, is a, for, is a being without, without form, but still has intelligence, still has a purpose, and one of their main purposes is to eat the energy of a human being. So let's talk about some of the five different types that I've, I've at least come across and, and know of and uh, there, there might be many, many more, but I'm just gonna share what I've got with you. The first are, are kind of a very, uh, a weaker type. And uh, someone I know called them hitchhikers is the best way of describing it. They're just, they're just beings that just sort of jump into your energy field when you're a little bit weak, when you're a little bit low, when you're a little bit stressed, and they just jump in for a while, uh, steal some energy for a few days, a few weeks, a few months, and then they find someone else and they just zip off to somebody else. So they're, they're ones that are just short-term annoying. Um, and you can have many of these. These are, these, you know, a person could have one, they could have 10. And then, then, the, then the next day they have eight, then they have two, then they have zero. So it, it's, it, you can also kind of see potentially fluctuating energy levels is just telling you how many of these hitchhikers you've picked up in the course of your day. Again, the more clear you can be, the more protected you can be, the more sovereign to your own energy you can be, the, um, the less chance you're going to get one of these. Uh, the best way to remove those or, or get them to go is, is by uh, some sort of purifying uh, scent or sound or uh, of course a native Indian would probably use um, uh, sage, burning sage, uh, just around the body to cleanse the, the energy field. They might burn sweet grass, some would burn tobacco. Uh, in, in Asia they would burn incense more likely. You can use various sounds from whether it be singing bowls, didgeridoos, uh, just uh, bells, all sorts of things can help c cleanse them away from that, from the aura. Of course, there's all sorts of aromatherapy type oils and smells and even exercises that can be done to, because those are, remember, those are just like travelers. They're just, they're just, they're just hitching a ride for a while and they're going to find someone else to hitch on to. Uh, a similar type will be a, a similar type of entity that just lives at a particular location. They're not necessarily nasty, and you'll normally find them in like malls, airports, places that just naturally drain you. It's because these entities have decided rather than hitchhike on any single person, they're going to hitchhike on a location, and they're just going to they're just going to quickly jump to anyone that walks by. Boom, get a bit. Boom, get a bit. Boom, get a bit. I, I know if if I'm not a, if, uh, for me if I'm not aware when I walk through a mall. I can be in a mall for 10 minutes, and by the time I walk out, I'm exhausted. 
like just wiped out and it's because of all these little tiny things sucking a tiny bit of energy in the space um, so again it's it often helps just to if that does happen to you again just get home similar cleansing things as, as what you've had before to just clean those off if somebody's been doing a lot of work particularly um, who might be a therapist or a counselor um, <coughs> excuse me or someone who is working with um, having just having a challenging conversation with a friend uh, there's always a possibility that that person being at a low energy state or, or because people working you know in, in, the, in the health field so they're around people who have a, an illness of some kind there could be parasitic entities that again like to try to hitch from them onto you and again it can be it can be really good if you're in these kind of fields and you're in you're someone who has regular has to have regular conversations not just your typical with typical workmates but with people who are having some difficulty it can be good to also do a cleansing um, at the uh, as soon as you come home to just uh, running oh sorry running water is another really good cleansing agent whether it's just under your shower uh, of course in the ancient world you would have gone under a stream and best uh, best uh, under a, a water a small waterfall and, and those are also very good cleansing agents there's also like I say there's there's exercises you can do to also cleanse the aura more uh, sea salt is another one I'm just picking up things off the top of my head certain stones I know of uh, by carrying them particularly uh, black tourmaline is a really good uh, energy uh, protection stone and a cleansing stone I might even have one on me now yeah a black tourmaline uh, so those are all recommended for cleaning out these ones the next type of entity is a little is much more difficult and that's an that would be a parasitic entity this is one that is not just a traveler it's it's found you personally and it's going to stick with you right to the end of your life if you don't get rid of it and uh, these things are I wouldn't call them certainly evil by any stretch of the imagination they're just there to steal your energy so they just want to keep you in a in, in a strong enough state that you can keep living but not but not and, and enough that they can drain your energy for themselves and you will never be able to feel fully strong and strengthened and they will constantly create experiences in you that will create the kind of emotion that they particularly eat so some might eat anger some might eat frustration some might eat disappointment some might eat depression some might eat anxiety some might eat stress and they're going to try to create you know if they're eating um, if they're eating uh, anger well they don't need to create depression in you because they can't eat it they can't eat all of the emotions there's just certain emotions they can eat and that's one thing to, to check out if you think you have a parasitic entity watch when you have certain emotions do you have an emotion and then not really notice a huge energy drop from having it but certain emotions you have the emotion whatever it is and after you're just wiped out you're just exhausted that's probably the parasitic entity stealing that from you um, again it, it's sometimes it's very hard to, to track them down to know they're there personally that's why a lot of cases you need someone else to who has much more experience to help check if you have them and to help the process of cleaning these away these are not uh, you can't just clear these away with some sage and some and some running water and some salt you're, you're, you have to do some work to get especially the longer they've been there the harder it is they're going to be to remove and that comes to the first problem in the healing process is that a most healers are not going to even believe they exist and in, will never be able to track them down even if you ask them to so a huge majority of healers can't help you at all of the healers that say they can help you I would say the majority of those then let's say that's 20% of the 25% of those people out there they can at least sense them or feel them or or know that a person has them I'm at that place I'm at a place where I can generally tell if someone probably has one or probably doesn't have one the third stage is the hardest and that is to remove them and that's a very specific process some healers can work with parasitic entities if the person hasn't had them for too long and they've only had them for a year or two but once you start getting into multiple years or even over decades it requires a very special knowledge of this and a very special um, way of doing your practice so unfortunately a lot of people go to healers who say they can do it they pay for the service they get it done and they feel better for a few days because they may have weakened it a little bit they may have weakened the parasite so it's not stealing energy for, for a while so they actually think something's happened but then a week later everything's back the way it always was nothing's changed 
and that's because the actual removal of it is very different than, than a weakening of it or slowing it down for a short period of time. The next type of being to consider is the demonic entity. And you can call this with any kind of name you want, uh, you know, an, an, uh, an alien, an extraterrestrial, uh, but, uh, and I'm not trying to put this into any kind of like, you know, religious term either, uh, but certainly all religions and all ancient cultures have their, their demons and demonic um, parts of their mythology and their religion. These, these are the beings that are not just parasitic entities, they're actually there to destroy you. They just don't want your energy. They want to actually destroy the thing that they have. And they, they are the ones that are able to alter the mind, alter the thoughts, get the person to act in whatever way the, paras the, the, the demonic entity wants them to act. They're extremely dangerous to have, of course, personally, they're dangerous to be around if another person has them. Generally, the more of a, of, a, of a psychopath or more of a just a nasty, evil person they, a person is, it's most likely not, it's not them, it's not, their, it's, it's not them as a human being. A natural human being doesn't naturally want to hurt anyone, uh, injure anyone, cause anyone any suffering. That's not natural to humans. But it is when they have a demonic being. Then the demonic being is running the show. Uh, my father was a... Was a a psychopath for example and my way of being able to understand that time with him and understand the healing process was to see he wasn't acting directly like that he must have he obviously had a demonic being his whole life that was creating the havoc of course in his own life in his own world in his own mind and, and in the minds and the and the experiences of all those who were around him um, so that's how I, I got I got to understand the, para, the the demonic type parasite from having one attached to a parent. Uh, those require an extremely careful work, and there's very few people out there that can actually get rid of them. Um, I've met a couple of these people. I know even some native medicine men, very very wonderful medicine men won't tackle these kind of things they'll send them to you might say even to another elder where you have to go to a very specific elder on the reservation to handle these kind of things because they are the sort of expert in that and, and if you think you have a demonic being uh, yeah then then you need you need a real expert in the field and uh, there are a few out there I think uh, there's of course the, like I say there's a few I've met and I, I can I know there's way more out there that most of them will not necessarily be saying too much publicly, I think. They'll be keeping it rather quiet and you kind of have to know in your community who might be able to do this. Uh, even in certain religious uh, areas, there's still priests slash, uh, you know, wise people, wise men and women who can still, still has this ability to do it. Um, I don't want to go into detail of what that's all about. I'm just letting you know if that's another kind of parasitic entity. The fourth kind is the one I've just been dealing with, which is an entity that has been sent by another person. And you can think of this more like a, a thought form. Uh, some thought forms can be projected outward and become manifest as things. Some thought forms can be projected as a, as a uh, well, you can send a thought form of, of, of joy and beauty to someone. Like if you, if you wanted, if you had someone you really wanted them to succeed or you really wanted them to, to do well, or you, you just, you have such, hope for them you could send if you if you crystallize that thought almost you would send that thought into their energy field and 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 strengthen their life the parasitic side of it is when someone doesn't want doesn't like someone doesn't want them to succeed and it, and it can be necessarily not conscious they're not thinking it consciously but subconsciously it's deep within their system and they they just have this natural ability to throw a thought form into another place and this is what happened to me I had a thought form thrown into me uh, many years ago that was making it very very hard for me to uh, to do anything actually it, it was it was blocking every roadway I was going to be on and um, that can also take quite a while to remove and it's also quite an amazing thing to to see it see where it came from and see how my life went from having this kind of thought entity. Uh, what did, uh, what did the, they're called Tupelos, I think. 
in some in some Mexican traditions. I, I, don't, I don't remember now. But it's a thought form sort of manifested. In this case, not as a manifested being, but as a, as a, as a crystallized thought that moves into another energy field. Almost like a black magic spell. Magic spell that's been placed into your, into your energy. So that's another kind you can, you can have, and those also are, you need to get rid of those. The final one, which is very interesting, and I just bumped into it today as I was getting ready to do this, because of course, as I mentioned, I'm in the process of, of, of the clean, of cleaning and, and healing from the last thing I've had for all of these years. And I happened to be reading one of my threads. It might have been my Cathar thread on stolen history. I'll, I'll put the link to, to make sure that the person who, who wrote this gets the credit for it. But they were talking about black helicopters. And I've always had a real strange wondering of why they show up when they do and what really their purpose is and this person's feeling on the black helicopters is that somehow this reality this matrix uh, of course wants to keep the the vibrational state low because the lower the vibrational state is everywhere the more these parasitic entities have easy access to human energy and to the human and and to create the emotions that they want but if a place or a person begins to raise their energy begins to raise their vibration begins to purify and become not at that level a black helicopter will come by with that somehow it has this ability just by being in the area to almost like fire off a, a wave of negative energy a wave of negative vibration on the area to try to pull it back down and uh, today sure enough after I'd read this I read this at around 10 o'clock this morning I knew I was going to be making this video I was getting very focused and, uh, and, I, and I had a, a, um, a raising day of, of uh, energy state, a raising day of health today. And it was, okay, this is great. I'm on a, I'm on a really good, uh, having a really good day here. But uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes after that, black helicopter goes by. But now at least I was aware of it. And so I did my best to just take time, focus on my energy field. Don't let the energy change. Uh, focus on my home. I'll do another, when I get home after this, I'll do a complete uh, saging down of the house and just cleanse out the energy, try to keep the energy space high. But it was just, it was like an amazing confirmation that I just read this this morning and then here three or four hours later I have the exact experience of the thing flying just like literally almost to the point that I could have looked inside the, the windows if I wanted to. I, I didn't of course, I just wanted to stay within my energy. And so um, yeah, there you go. There's a much longer discussion than I originally thought but I feel it's important. It's an important thing to at least all of you to not necessarily believe because again I, I don't want to post these videos and, and want you to believe anything just because I say it because who am I? You know, yeah I've done 20-25 years of really intense practice and stuff but that doesn't mean I I know everything. It certainly doesn't mean I'm right on uh, on things and you need to take what I say as that's the experience of the of the being sitting here the, the revelations that have come, the, the wisdom for me that has appeared, and then take it into yourself and say, okay, I'm not going to dismiss it because it sounds strange or I don't like it, and I'm not going to accept it because I want to accept it as well. You have to turn it into your own experience, like everything. Turn the knowledge into your own experience. It doesn't matter what it is. Look at it in your own life. And if you don't have anything to in your own experience to answer a yes or no to whatever has been presented to you, then take it, you always take it as a possibility. Well, maybe. I'm not going to accept it, but I'm not going to reject it. I'm going to allow to see, especially if it's something that might be affecting me, it has something to affect on my life, then I want to examine it a little more deeper and come to my own conclusion, right? Your conclusion and your knowledge is your knowledge. It doesn't have to be mine or anybody else's. Thanks for, again, being, uh, coming to spend time with me, for um, listening to what I have to say, for sharing what comes from it, and uh, for subscribing, for liking, for adding comments, and whatever else. I'm, I, I intend to keep this channel completely non-monetized and make it just a place where as long as the channel will stay up, I, I assume at some point all of these kind of channels will be taken down, that they, these kinds of information will, will no, no longer be allowed. So for now, um, take advantage of channels that are like mine that are trying to share these kinds of information with you. Uh, 
try to we'll try to get this stuff to as many people as are interested as possible and uh, thanks again for being around for listening and if you have ideas or suggestions for future videos by all means let me know that too I've got four or five in the sort of planning stages and the, and the researching that I'm getting through here in the next couple of weeks and then after that I will be ready for brand new areas and brand new ideas so I'll have another one coming up in two or three days for you and um, hope this was helpful.